The 1972 Andes Air Disaster is also known as the Andes Flight Disaster, or the Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571 Crash. On October 13, 1972, the plane crashed over a desolate part of the Andes on the Argentine-Chilean border, approximately 3,600 meters above sea level. Due to bad weather, the pilot incorrectly estimated the altitude and collided with a mountain. The plane was carrying a group of Uruguayan rugby players traveling from Montevideo for a match in Chile. Of the 45 people on board, only 27 passengers initially survived. After more than two months in the extreme conditions of the high mountains, only 16 survivors were rescued just before Christmas. Cannibalism played a role in their survival. The journey's beginning was fraught with difficulties. The flight from Montevideo to Santiago de Chile for a friendly match on October 12, 1972, was interrupted due to bad weather, forcing the rugby players to land in Mendoza, Argentina, where they spent the night. The journey resumed on Friday, October 13. However, problems persisted. Due to the bad weather, the plane couldn't climb high enough to fly over the Andes and had to fly along the mountain range to Malargu, then turn 90 degrees right and over Curico, aiming for Santiago for landing. Dense fog led to a critical error by the pilots, who, halfway between Malargu and Curico and believing they had crossed the mountain range, turned north into the mountains and began to descend upon approval from the control center in Santiago. The descent was turbulent. When a warning signal sounded, the pilot saw a cliff ahead, turned the engines to full throttle, and tried to clear the obstacle. They failed, the plane's tail hit the cliff, followed by the left wing, and then the right wing hitting another cliff further along. The rest of the plane crashed onto a steep slope and slid until it was embedded in a glacier. This collision deformed the cockpit and crushed the pilots against the wall with the control panel. The flight captain, Julio Ferradas, died instantly, and the co-pilot survived the impact but remained pinned in his seat. Shortly after the tail detached, both stewards and five other passengers fell out of the plane. Four passengers died in the crash. After the plane went missing from the Santiago dispatcher's radar, a search began. However, the plane's white color made it nearly invisible against the snow. The survivors decided to clear space in the wreckage. They removed seats and the deceased. A hole created by the tail detachment was temporarily covered with seats and luggage. The team's captain, Marcelo Perez, took charge of the organization. The supplies consisted of only a few bottles of wine and chocolate bars. The next day, more people died from their injuries, including the co-pilot, who mistakenly informed the others of their location before his death. Nando Paradu, initially thought dead, spent the first three days in a coma before awakening. Roberto Canessa and Gustavo Zerbino, both medical students, tended to the injured. A small portable radio found in the wreckage was repaired, providing information to the passengers but not allowing communication with the outside world. Eleven days after the crash, the bodies of six out of the seven missing people who fell from the plane were found during an initial exploratory trip. The seventh person was never found. Ten days post-crash, the survivors learned that the search had been called off. With dwindling supplies, it became clear they needed to find help themselves. As some of the rescued later reported, they faced a choice, die of starvation or survive by eating the flesh of the deceased. According to contemporary testimonies, they had to conserve fire and often ate the raw meat of the dead, which gave them a better chance of survival. The survivors found a map in the wreckage and, believing they were on the western side of the Andes, decided to seek help. On October 29, an avalanche struck the side of the plane opening, burying everyone inside. Roy Harley, not entirely buried, began frantically digging through the snow, searching for others. Each person dug out joined in digging out the others. Eight more people died, including Marcelo Perez, the team captain, and the last surviving woman, Liliana Methol. 
the plane's occupants undertook several expeditions, including one east of the wreckage, where they found the plane's tail containing batteries. However, these were too heavy to transport, so they had to move the radio from the fuselage to the tail to operate it. Roy Harley, who had the most experience with electronics in the team, attempted to get the radio working, but these efforts were unsuccessful. Additionally, Canessa, Nando, Byzantin, and Harley were caught in a severe snowstorm on their way back, nearly freezing to death. Over 60 days, a total of 29 people died. Eventually, the group decided that three members, Nando Paradu, Roberto Canessa, and Antonio Vizintin, would attempt to cross the Andes to bring help. To be stronger, they were given larger food rations than the others and tried to create primitive tools from the wreckage to aid their journey, like a sleeping bag sewn from plane insulation. Two days into the journey, the trio reached the peak only to realize they were in a completely different location than they thought. Consequently, Byzantin returned to the wreckage. Nando and Canessa walked a total of 70 kilometers over 10 days. They were eventually discovered by local herdsman Sergio Catalan near the Los Maidens Ranch, who initially provided them with food and then called for help. The herdsmen spotted the two men on the other side of a river bank. Paradu frantically waved his arms wide like wings and shouted for help. The herdsmen then fortunately threw a paper wrapped around a stone, tied with a string, across the river. He asked in it what the men needed. Paradu then wrote a response on the other side of the paper. As he later described in his book, he knew he had to carefully choose his words so Catalan would understand the urgency of the situation. His hands were trembling, but as the pencil touched the paper, he knew what to write. I come from a plane that crashed in the mountains. I am from Uruguay. We have been walking for ten days. I have a friend who is injured. There are still 14 injured people in the plane. We need to get out of here quickly and don't know how. We have no food. We are weak. When will you come for us and take us away? Please. We can't walk anymore. A rapid rescue operation followed. Nando and Canessa subsequently recounted their story to journalists on December 22nd. Together with the rescuers, they located the crash site. In the first wave, the first eight people were airlifted out, and the rest had to spend one more night in the wreckage with the rescuers, who brought blankets and supplies. The next day, on December 23rd, the remaining survivors were transported to Los Maidens and from there, along with the others, to a hospital in Santiago. Out of the 45 people, only 16 survived. Incredibly, just about 20 kilometers from the crash site was an abandoned hotel complex, where the Uruguayans would undoubtedly have had a better chance of survival than in the plane wreckage. The miracle in the Andes continues to fascinate to this day. Uruguayans and tourists can learn more about the event at a museum in Montevideo. <laughs>